What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Stronger Series. Annette De La Rosa here and we have Malcolm back on the episode and this series we're actually going to be covering a Q&A because there's been so many questions asked by you guys on all of our videos so we want to make sure that we're addressing each question so that you guys know that we you know we want to provide the most value for all of you viewers so we're going to kind of go into a lot of those questions and also I'm going to ask my own questions that I want to ask Malcolm that have maybe not been fully answered in some videos. And so the main thing that I want to emphasize for this YouTube channel is that I'm basically putting out all this content to help all of you become the best version of yourself. I want you all to create the body and life that you love. So with that for me has, you know, I've transitioned a lot throughout the years from being a bikini competitor to now living more of a balanced lifestyle and in my own way, I've found my happy balance. So I wanna help a lot of you guys find your own happy balance. So a lot of the topics that we cover on these YouTube videos, they're not for extremes. And we'll go right into the first question that we're gonna be asking Malcolm here, and I'm also gonna answer this. When you're watching these videos, whether you're starting out, whether you're an intermediate you know, fitness person or an advanced person, I just want you guys to know that this channel is all about making this fitness and healthing a lifestyle that you enjoy okay so let's jump right into this uh, there's some really good questions here that you guys have asked in the past and the first one is by Kate McCambly and she's a proud supporter she actually purchased one of your programs she DM'd me after I posted this on my story so I love her she's always super sweet and she says one question I love my one glass of red wine each night. Will that one glass mess up all my hard work or prohibit me from progressing if the rest of the time I'm on point with my training and diet? So I'll let you answer that first. So short answer about um, consuming one glass of red wine a night is not going to um, ruin your training transformation, body composition. It's not gonna affect um, results in the gym. Um, from a weight standpoint. If anything, it's going to allow you to unwind at the end of the night. What's great about it is that it contains resveratrol and resveratrol comes from grapes and it's a very, very pro antioxidant. So it's been shown in research to help with anti-cancer effects and lowering uh, blood cholesterol and it comes from the skin of the grapes. So um, in countries that grow wine, so say like Sardinia where um, the trees are grown on a slope and the sun hits it on an angle, those uh, the grapes have to create a lot of antioxidants because their skin is so thin um, so that they don't die. And that's one of the healthy benefits that comes along with drinking uh, red wine is the resveratrol that you get from it. That is amazing. I love that I'm always learning something new from Malcolm. That was like the most in-depth answer. My answer would have been, hell yes girl, if you want that glass of wine, <laughs> you have it. No, I'm just kidding. But. In all the seriousness here, I do think that when it comes to maintaining a healthy balance, you're gonna have to find whatever works with you. Whatever you find is your healthy balance might mean a glass of wine per night. Now, if you were having like a whole bottle of per, per night, then I'd say, okay, maybe, you know, that's too much. You're not gonna get the results you wanna see. So sometimes you do have to make sacrifices as to limit yourself in certain areas. However, like Malcolm said, there are healthy benefits to the wine drinking that are not going to stop your progress in the gym or with your body goals. Yeah, and uh, like one glass a night yeah. is not going to kill your goals. Exactly. But drinking, like what you said, maybe on a Friday and Saturday night, drinking a bottle or, or two mm -hmm. with friends, that might hinder the results that you're going to get because, yes, it does contain. Um, carbohydrates from sugar so you do have to kind of limit like your consumption from that sense but one glass a night is not going to be the end all be all of, of your body transformation or, totally. or or getting into the 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 condition that you want to be in perfect answer yeah. I love that going into question two uh, this person is Dac no I'm sorry if I'm saying the names wrong but I think that's how you say it and she, and he said been running three to four miles a day, lifting weights and eating clean for three months now. But I stopped losing weight after week five. Is that because I gained muscle or should I cut cheat day? I'm kind of frustrated. So basically this person reached a plateau 
And what would you suggest, like if somebody's running too frequently and maybe they're not seeing the weight loss results that they want, would you be able to go into depth as to why that could be happening? So when you reach that point where your body hits that plateau, that's your body telling you that you need a new stimulus to create new change. So it could be lowering the amount of time that you're running per week and increasing your training, or it could be it could be the opposite effect depending on what you want. However, there comes a point in time where you need to change the stimulus that your body has on it to create a new change. So um, once you hit a plateau, uh, it's time to change things up and either make it more intense or increase the volume, shorten the distance. Um, but that's where a high level coach will come into play to help you actually like progress um, appropriately and make it sustainable for you. Love that. Very, very in depth. I like that. And the takeaway is just to switch things up consistently because as someone that I used to run all the time, I didn't see the results I wanted to see with my body composition changing necessarily because I was over exerting myself, almost like burning way too many calories, far more than I consumed. So my body was never getting any muscle growth and it was just constantly burning, burning, burning. So the body holds onto fat when it doesn't have the proper calories in versus calories out. Is that correct? So that's another factor too. If you're running too much, you may just want to taper it down a little bit and see if you know your body changes like that. And again, going back to what Malcolm said, is always change up the program so that you keep your body guessing. All right, moving on to the next question. Uh, this is from Laura Clendenning. Laura, hi, I miss you. I knew, I knew her from Vancouver, I haven't seen her in years. But anyway, she's been watching the series and she wants to know, do you recommend a transition week, say every three months, to give the body a break? If so, during this week, is there anything else you should or could be doing? Example, calisthenics, yoga, etc. And she said, I love this series, yay! Awesome. Okay, so there's two answers to that question. Okay. So in strength training, there's something called a deload. A deload would be reducing the amount of volume by about 40 to 50% every third workout. So by reducing the volume, so the volume it would be cutting your sets by 50%, for example. So if you're doing six sets of an exercise, you would cut it to three. So that would give your, um, your muscular system an opportunity to recover during that week of training. Going back into the fourth week, you'd be able to increase the amount of weight that you're using um, for the specific exercises that you're performing within that training phase. So that's one option. The second is um, taking the 13th week off, which is um, Isvan Bali. Dr. Isvan Bali is an expert on athlete development, long-term athlete development, and he came up with that, which is uh, rule of 13, it's called, where you take the 13th week off from weight training specifically, and you are doing things like calisthenics, or you're doing yoga, you're doing cycling, you're doing swimming, uh, maybe you're running if you don't, if you're not a runner, uh, and you're just a weight trainer, and you want to get outside, and or you could go hiking, something like that. But it's um, staying away from the weights. It's deloading the body, the mind, um, and doing something that's still active, but not stressing the muscular system like you do when you're weight training. So this is from Heather M on YouTube, and she says. I've had three C-sections and I'm having the hardest time gaining muscle back in my abdomen. Are there any suggestions outside of the normal ab workouts which do not seem to be working? Shout out to the mamas out there. I don't know what it's like, but I love that there's so many moms making this whole fitness thing their lifestyle, even when they have to juggle their kids and everything like that. So that's a great question. What do you think about that? If somebody just had three C-sections, how would they actually strengthen their core and start seeing results in that area outside of the normal routine? Okay, so when you've had a C-section, um, they're actually they're, they're cutting the abdominal wall completely open to, to pull the baby out. So when you've had three, think of all the trauma that's gone into the abdomen, um, the scar tissue that's formed uh, to heal itself, but it's happened three times. So from a, a weight training standpoint, the compound movements, so think of like the, the squats and the deadlifts and the military presses, um, the bench presses, chin-ups, they're going to actually 
uh, work your core a lot more than doing an isolation exercise because when you do them, for example, when you do the squat, your core has to be engaged to stabilize the spine and keep you um, from falling over. So training with the, the compound movements is a surefire way to make sure that the muscles of the abs are engaged during the training. But if it is a, a fat loss um, question where you can't see your abs because of definition, then that's where maybe uh, nutrition might come into play or I mean there's so many other factors but um, from a training standpoint the compound movements um, will make sure that those muscles are working. So that's true that that's so key and I know that working your abdomen goes way beyond just doing the crunches and like you said the compound movements are really going to be key because if you're working out anyway you might as well put that muscle connection on your abdomen and also we've covered so much in this series about fat loss in general so if it's more of a body fat thing that is covering your abdomen i know that last week the video that i, I made on having a smaller waist it's really just about finding the right nutrition and the right training program that is going to uh, decrease your body fat because that's when your abs are going to show. It doesn't matter how many crunches you do or how many compound exercises you do. If you need to lose body fat, that is what's going to show the definition that you are working so hard at in the gym. Question from Roger that might help you guys answer some questions as well. So he says, cool video. I love the emphasis on strength versus aesthetics. Amen, because aesthetics will come once you're focusing on the more important things in life, <laughs> in my opinion. So anyway, one, why do you not do a low bar squat, question mark? Doesn't it activate the posterior chain better than the more common high bar method? And also two, why did we choose to do a hamstring isolation with the curls if the emphasis was on compound movements? So as you guys know from the past few videos, we have changed the training dramatically. This was asked in the very first video that we ever posted. So we're gonna let Malcolm answer what the difference between the types of squats are, whether they're helpful, um, you know, whether all of them are working the posterior chain the same way, and why we chose to do high bar versus low bar on the first. Okay. So Roger's totally right that low bar squat is going to work your posterior chain more than a high bar squat. There's so many different variations to squats and there's no best squat variation. They all work, it's just knowing when to use what or focusing on a specific part of the body um, at certain times throughout your training phase to get the training effects that we're looking for. So the reason why we used a high bar squat is because we want to focus more on the quadriceps um, where you're keeping the elbows directly under the bar, you're emphasizing knees going forward and you're keeping your torso upright. So that was the purpose behind that is we're focusing more on the quad dominant type of squat with the high bar. Uh, from the lying leg curl, um, lying leg curl has two functions. One is to flex the knee, so when you're doing a lying leg curl, you're flexing the knee, and that's working the hamstrings at the attachments behind the knee. Other function of the hamstring is hip extension. So think when you're doing like a Romanian deadlift, a good morning, or um, a 45 degree back extension, or a horizontal back extension, you are working the other function of the hamstrings of the origin of where they attach. So for that specific phase of training, we are recruiting both ends of the hamstrings by doing a a lying leg curl and then the next exercises uh, in the prescription was a 45 degree back extension so not only are we working the hip extension movement but also the knee flexion movement of the hamstring that way we are focusing on complete development of the hamstrings by training uh, the origin and training the attachment in the same workout and also because my workouts were built around the fact that my hamstrings were the place where I hold the most body fat. Ladies, can I hear an amen? Because I know that a lot of us hold that body fat back there. So we, a lot of these programs have been built around the emphasis of adding muscle to the hamstrings. So whether that be, you know, with the compound movements or with isolation, we're hitting them in both angles. And that's how we've lost body fat back there. Yay! So make sure to always emphasize the hamstrings, not just the glutes, ladies, because I know that we all love training glutes, but what's really gonna give you that whole, you know, <laughs> look that you want, not to just focus on aesthetics, but come on. We all want a nice booty and legs. So what's really gonna help balance all that together is the hamstrings with the glutes. So focus on both. All right, so 
we're gonna ask one more question and then I'm just gonna fire like five questions that I've frequently gotten that I couldn't dig into my DMs and find, but I'm gonna ask you five questions just randomly. And, but before that, I wanna clarify one thing. So there's been a lot of you that ask about the ATP supplements that we mentioned a lot in the videos. We are both affiliated with ATP. However, we both wouldn't be affiliated with ATP unless we fully wholeheartedly believed in them. And that's something that I stand true to because in the past, I have had a lot of supplement companies that reach out to me that want me to promote their products, but I would never promote something that I don't believe in. So that is why we add the supplements in here. And a lot of you have asked because there have been some people that purchase the products. And one of the questions that I received was a little bit of a tricky question, but I wanna get this answered for many of you that may be hesitant to try supplements. All supplements are always going to say that you should consult a doctor after a few weeks of taking them. That's more of like the regulation to make sure that they are not providing medical advice because everyone is so different and everybody, you know, we don't, we don't know if anybody has medical illnesses or anything like that. So that's why every product, no matter what it is, is always gonna say that, even a multivitamin. So one of the questions that I received was, Mirna Martinez uh, asked, she said that she purchased the Enos from ATP Labs after watching our videos because she doesn't like caffeine in her pre-workouts, neither do I because I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> so anyway, she wanted to know, as for the pre-workout, since she uses it about four to five times a week, you know, basically the entire year. And she said, I did notice that the label says to consult your doctor if you are planning to use the product for more than three weeks. So she says since she does use the product frequently throughout the year, is that something that she should be concerned about? We're, we're gonna answer that quickly, but also we're gonna go, I, I wanna mention that ATP Labs is a pharmaceutical grade company, along with, you know, it has several regulations that Malcolm's gonna talk about that make it a very pure product. So that again, is just one of those regulations that every supplement company has to throw out there so that you know that you're responsible for your health and you are the one that needs to be making sure you get regular blood work and that all your health is good. On the side of the supplements, obviously they make sure their supplements are super clean. So do you wanna kind of go into depth about the quality of ATP products? Sure, yeah, I'm obviously extremely biased because I've used almost every pharmaceutical grade supplement that you can't get in stores. So Thorn Research, Designs for Health, Metagenic, Zymogen, which are all great companies. But um, what's different about ATP is like, I've had the opportunity to go to the manufacturing facility to tour everything and how clean and strict and rigid it is. Um, and all of the quality of the ingredients, the raw materials that they get to create the supplements are unbelievable. But uh, what's different about it is that it's informed choice. So informed choice is um, WADA approved. WADA is the world anti-doping agency and that means that uh, all of the products that ATP provides is checked off as informed choice by the world anti-doping agency so they have gone in and they have inspected the train of uh, the manufacturing facility to ensure that there's no banned substances um, and there's no products that would allow an athlete or like an Olympic athlete or professional athlete to test positive for anything on the bad substance list so that ensures that the quality of the products are very clean and they do not contain any anything that would uh, be harmful to the body I absolutely love how in-depth that is and that is so relieving I'm sure to hear for many of you because if you are watching these videos and you see a lot of different fitness influencers plugging in products I know how annoying that can be but I also know that you know you have to pick and choose who you trust out there on the YouTube world on the Instagram world and of course always do your own research that's what it comes down to right go with what you believe in but I am gonna ask Malcolm a few questions that might help answer some of the doubts that you guys have had in your fitness journey and I love when I don't plan things and I just come up with questions <laughs> so I'm putting myself in a beginner's shoes right now and I'm gonna ask Malcolm five questions he has no idea what I'm gonna ask him but let's do this all right all right question number one so you're a beginner in the gym you just started lifting weights you're super motivated you want this fitness transformation to start what are the three most important supplements that you can take boom okay so in my opinion the three most important supplements you can take is one a multivitamin so 
you can't out supplement a bad diet so nutrition is the most important thing so make sure that you're taking good proteins good carbohydrates good healthy fats tons of vegetables outside of that a fundamental supplement that everyone should be on in my opinion is a multivitamin just because the quality of the soil nowadays is so depleted in nutrients that you can guarantee that you're not getting everything that you need to make sure that your body is functioning optimally and making sure that you're getting all of the nutrients in that your body actually needs without taking in a high quality multivitamin. The second supplement would be magnesium. Anyone who sweats and is active is going to be deficient in magnesium. The latest research shows that there's 70 plus percent of the American population is deficient in magnesium. There's lots of different magnesium out there. You want to make sure that the one that you're taking ends in A-T-E. That means that it's chelated and it's bound to a specific amino acid to get uptake into the uh, body differently. So citrate, glycinate, threonate, um, orotate. As long as they end in A-T-E, it's gonna ensure that it's getting uptake into the different parts of the tissues. The third supplement is going to be a fish oil. So fish oil or omega-3, um, it's great for heart health, it helps with insulin resistance and lowering blood sugar. Um, most individuals in the US are deficient. There's a huge shift between omega-6s, so those are pro-inflammatory, um, come from grains, uh, to omega-3s. The ratio is outrageous. Um, so making sure that you're getting in omega-3s that's going to come from cold water fish, sardines, mackerels for example, or taking it in supplement form. If you just get those basic foundations down of, of those supplements, uh, you'll see gains in the gym um, outside of just like your nutrition and everything that you're taking. I'm dancing over here because I'm like, I'm taking all of those. All right, cool. So going on to the second question. Somebody asked this and I'm going to reword it. <laughs> I just dropped my phone. I'm going to reword it in a different way. But if somebody is on a budget and they can only shop for three things at the grocery store to make massive gains, <laughs> no, to make, you know, to get results in the gym and they have to keep it basic, what would you suggest getting? Okay. Is that hard? <laughs> it is a challenge it because is. you get what you pay for as far as quality, you know? Like, um, I prefer to spend my money on grass fed organic beef. I mean, you could go to Costco and you could get it at Costco at a cheaper rate. You get bison. Um, you could do bulk uh, rice, organic jasmine or basmati rice. You could do bulk organic oats um, if you eat grains. Um, Man, you could do. Oh shit, I don't know. It's hard. It All right, hard. I'll, I'll take over that one. I would say back in my college days when I was getting into this healthy lifestyle, I would eat a lot of tuna. I know that that's maybe not the best, but you can get more sustainable sources of tuna. That was my go to because I was so broke. So I would get tuna and I would get just whatever vegetables were like the cheapest. Like I would get a lot of spinach, I would get cucumbers, whatever I can do in that sense. And back in the day, I, you know, I've always kind of been very in tune with what works with my body. And I, I would get a lot of like sweet potatoes because that's just what worked. So that was kind of like my standard go-to. Again, it is important to switch up your protein sources and things like that. But I know how it can be when you're on a tight budget. Like Malcolm said, you are going to get what you pay for in terms of overall health and things like that. But definitely start with what you can. Do the best you can in whatever situation you're in. And go to places like Trader Joe's because I'm always in chase of those farmers deals. Farmers markets. And farmers markets. Unbelievable deal on yes. produce at farmers markets. Um, usually you can find a farmer that also um, you know, has, so has beef or chicken. Uh, so usually farmers markets are like a go-to for, for cheaper healthier quality uh, agreed you know and you're getting like the organic you know where it came from you're getting yeah. the best source of everything so hit up the farmers markets that's so true yeah At, and I love Trader Joe's just to like, plug in Trader for a second there's a Trader Joe's right next to the Whole Foods that I go to the times that I've gotten the same exact things at Whole Foods my bill is like $200 when I get the exact same things at Trader Joe's, you know, minus or plus a little few little things, it's like 50 to 60 bucks. So know where you're shopping as well. And we'll leave you guys with that. I'm gonna answer some questions because Malcolm's gotta go to an appointment, but I will answer two more questions that I got on Instagram. This question is so good. Okay, so her name is Gloria Vega. Hi, Gloria. And she asked me, do you ever plan on competing in bikini again? And would you consider training anyone who is interested in competing? What advice would you give someone who is considering 
competing. All right, so I'll try to make this as short as possible. To answer the first question, I'm not ever going to compete personally anymore. I feel like that was a very important phase of my life that brought a lot of, you know, ex I hit my goals in many areas, wanting to be in the fitness industry, wanting to be a fitness and health coach. That kind of started my whole journey in the fitness world, so I'm always gonna be so grateful for that. However, just like any, you know, <laughs> transitions of life, I feel like it's important to also know when to close a chapter. And that was a chapter that I closed about a year ago, just because now my life is a lot more balanced in the ways that I want it to be. So I don't see myself competing again. Competing is a sport that requires a lot of sacrifice and it requires you to be like all in. And in my opinion, anything I've ever done in my life, I'm either all in or I'm not gonna do it. Because if I'm not gonna commit to being like the absolute best that I can be in that sport or in that area, then I just feel like it's like a waste of time for me personally. So when I was competing, my goal was to reach the pro level. I never necessarily wanted to win the Olympia or anything like that. It was just to get to that point to have, to be able to have a place to inspire other people, which I'm doing now. So that's why I'm not competing anymore. Now, I have coached many girls in the past that compete. Absolutely love being a coach, but right now this year I'm actually taking time off from coaching and redefining a lot of programs that I've had in the past on my website. So I am gonna launch my full coaching and everything at the end of the year. So as of now, I'm not coaching any clients. In the future, I will be coaching clients again. And Gloria's last question was, what advice would you give someone who is considering competing? All right, I'm gonna try to keep this really short. The first thing I would have you define as my client personally is I would want to know why you want to do it you know Simon Sinek which is someone that I really look up to wrote this book called start with why so that is super important to me because you have to really know why you want to do something so if there are solid reasons and you are willing to go all in on that and you are willing to make the sacrifices needed to get to that level then I would say of course compete just know that there are many different ways to do it. There are healthier ways to do it. There are unhealthy ways to do it. And something that I've learned throughout my personal journey, and I just posted a picture about this on Instagram on my own transformation, is that for me, competing was not my healthiest state. Okay, because again, you do have to make a lot of sacrifices. So you're limited on your eating, you're limited on a lot of things. So you have to really define again, what is your why, okay? And I would also advise someone that who is competing to, once you define your why, realize that there is gonna be a time in a place for everything. So you know your why, you know what your goal is. Once you reach your goal, what's next? So you kind of have to like look further out in the future than just competing and see if it really fits the kind of life you want to create, okay? And then last one, I would say if you're like, okay, I know my why, I know exactly what my vision looks like and everything, then I would really suggest that you get an amazing coach that cares about your health, that is willing to be there for you, because it's such an emotional sport, I feel, if you don't have a coach that you can talk to and really like connect with, then you can be left in the dark and you can go in a really dark place when it comes to your health and all that stuff. So those are my three things. Start with why, find out what your vision is, and find an awesome coach that is gonna help you reach those goals, your why, your vision, and everything. So. That is what I would have to say, Gloria. So good luck with that. Let me know if you do plan on competing and I'm always here to answer any of your questions. The question here is, what are your thoughts on waist trainers? And she says that she loves the products. Thank you. Fit Italian Queen, I love your support. You're always commenting, DMing on all my stuff and I'm glad that I'm able to help you. So going to the waist trainers, I personally have never believed in waist trainers. Why? Because you're literally suffocating your organs. Like that cannot be good at all. And again, going back to my video last weekend, or last week, to get a small waist, it doesn't come down to wearing a waist trainer. It comes down to your nutrition and having a low body fat percentage. And again, also a little bit of genetics and things like that. So there is no product that is going to help you 
get a small waist, it all comes down with hard work. And it's also just how we're built. We have to just love ourselves how we are while we're working on our best self. And if there's anything that is not really supporting your health and your overall physical well being, then I don't promote it. So I've never been in two waist trainers. However, I have in the past actually sold neoprene wraps, which are completely different from waist trainers. Neoprene wraps basically are like wearing a sweater on top of your body. It makes you sweat more. So when you wear it around here, it makes you sweat more in this area, which helps you retain less water. That's completely different than promoting like fat loss through like suffocation. So those I do believe in, neoprene, you can look it up. Waist trainers, never. Okay. Um, right over here we have Anina Rob who asked, how do you suggest dealing with friends and or family who don't support your healthy eating habits? Ooh, that is a little tricky because I know that you want to obviously, not to say that you want to please your family and friends, but to a certain extent, you want them to support you. That's totally normal. However, you have to look at what you're doing and, and really ask yourself, is this benefiting me? If it is, if you're doing this for your overall health, for your overall being, you're focusing on becoming the best version of yourself, that should be your main focus. And you, in my opinion, the best way to approach something like this would be to be very open in communication with your friends and with your family and say, you know, this is something that I'm choosing to do because I want to better myself in all ways that I can. And I would really appreciate your support in just helping me eat healthy. And I know how it is that sometimes when you're around family, I'm Latina, like when I'm around family, they're like, oh, eat this, eat that. And there's just many things that I say no to now because it doesn't fit my healthy lifestyle. So. You just have to know what you truly want to stand for and be willing to be, you know, certain with what you you stand for. You need to be able to tell your friends and your family that this is what you want to be doing. And again, it's something healthy, so they should be willing to support you as well. Trust me on that and just be open. Just be willing to let them know exactly how you feel during this phase because you need their support. So that is where I'll leave off, you guys. Thank you so much for asking all these amazing questions. I hope that we were able to answer them all. If there is something that you know we didn't quite answer as well as you would have liked, please leave a comment below. Leave a comment below if you have any other questions regardless. We're here to help. I love doing these videos and I wanna teach you all how to live your best life. I want you to create the body you love, but also the life you love. So remember to find your happy balance. It's totally possible to do so. Thank you again for watching. See you guys next week. Peace out.